Hey everybody, Jeff Harmon of phototacopodcast.com. In this video, I am going to walk you through my advice on how photographers should get an external drive ready for use in their photography workflow. For those of you that don't want to sit through the longer explanation, here it is really fast with zero explanation. Plug in the drive. As soon as it comes up over here on the right, or on your desktop, I guess I should say, then launch the Disk Utility app. Here's the app. Make sure you pick the right drive. See that it is XFAT format. And hit the Erase button. Change to MOA Mac OS Extended Journaled. Change the name to be three years from now, or today's date, that the date that you're putting the drive into service. Hit erase. Again, disclaimer, make sure you do not do this. So far, we haven't made any changes to the drive. Do not do this unless you are absolutely certain you have the right drive selected and you are able to lose all of the information on that drive. It doesn't take very long. It reformats the drive, remounts the disk, you hit done, and now it says Mac OS Extended Journaled, and you're ready to go. Today, I'm going to be adding a brand new, just barely ordered and received, SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD 2 terabyte drive. Don't worry too much about the exact drive that I'm being, I'm using here, although if you're interested in a very fast drive that can make sure you get the most out of Lightroom and Photoshop and doing your photo editing, then I'll put a link down in the description to it, but this is not a video about that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you from beginning to end what it is I advise photographers to do so that that drive is ready for use. All of us have such critical and important work we're doing. We wanna make our, do everything we can to best protect our images, make sure we don't lose them. There's lots of ways that that can happen. I'm gonna go through a few things that I think you should set up before you ever use an external drive in your photo editing workflow so that you're, you're in the best possible position. So I'm gonna go plug in that drive into my MacBook Pro for the very first time so that we can see what the, what the whole process is from beginning to end. And I have now seen the extreme SSD come up and that means it's ready to go. Before I do anything else, I definitely don't want to start putting images on there and just get going. I need to make sure it has the correct format of the drive. And if you don't know a lot about what that means, just follow along here. I'm going to explain things as I go so that it hopefully it makes a lot more sense. So I'm going to hit command space on my keyboard to bring up spotlight search and I'm going to type disk utility so that I can launch this software that comes with your Mac to be able to manage your drives. And I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to have, I'm going to be able to show you the utility. So here's how it came up and it, by default, it selects your Mac's internal drive. I don't want to touch that for sure. I have a number of other drives here. We're not going to talk about those, but this is the brand new drive. This extreme SSD drive is brand new. And so I click on that and now you can see, um, some details, some information about that drive. It is an SSD drive, but I think you, you should apply this same thought process or the same way you're looking at the drive as to any external drive you're adding to Mac OS. Okay, so the biggest thing that we need is right here, this XFAT label that you can see, that is something that I advise photographers not to use. If it's not good to be used with your photography, then why would a manufacturer send it to you with that format? It's a pretty simple reason. It has mostly, it's mostly to do with customer service and having to support the drive. The uh, SanDisk, which is now owned by Western Digital, they don't want to have people calling in or creating support tickets with them because they, um, they can't read or write the drive. And if it came in a different format, it was very common to get a drive in another format called NTFS, which is a Windows specific format. And Mac can read NTFS, but without special software, it can't write to the NTFS drive. You wouldn't be able to save anything to it on a Mac if, you, if it was formatted NTFS. So some drives came that way for a little while, just very common format for Windows, the best format for Windows. And, uh, and on Mac, you had problems. To avoid that, instead of to, to not have that issue where Mac users might end up having a problem and calling support, like I said, they format it in the XFAT format. And this is the most universal format 
available, especially for large sized drives. There's some others, but I'm not going to talk about that here. You're highly likely to run into your drives being formatted X, XFAT. And uh, so it can, it enables read and write without any problems on both Mac and Windows. So it sounds ideal, doesn't it? That not only will you not have any problems on Mac OS, but you could take that same drive that you're using there and put it, attach it to Windows, and you're good to go. And if that's a use case you have, you should stick with that. XFAT's probably the best format without adding software to, uh, to be able to do that. By the way, I highly recommend Paragon software if you need to have like cross-platform capabilities and you don't want XFAT. Why would I, why do you not want XFAT then? Why should you change this? If there's no problems between Mac OS and Windows, why would you want to change this? It's not the best format for Mac. That's why. Uh, XFAT, I don't, I don't want to get into the super technical details about this, but in general, XFAT does less to make sure that you're, as you save things to the drive, that they're saved correctly. There is a larger possibility that as you save something to the drive, if it's formatted XFAT, that you can lose things as it gets written there, or not even necessarily lose the whole thing, but it gets corrupted as you, you save things there. Now, it's not extreme. It's no guarantee that like if you leave it XFAT that you're going to absolutely run into these kinds of problems. It's just more risky. It takes on, it's more likely than other formats that that can happen. Not guaranteed, but more likely. So for me, I care enough about my images and what I'm doing in the workflow. I don't want to take even what small risk it might be for XFAT to have a problem as I save things to the drive. And I'm going to, I want to have the, the best possible way to do that. So again, unless you need to be able to share this drive with Windows and you don't want to buy extra software for that, uh, I highly recommend that you change the format from XFAT to something else. I'll show you what in a second. Let's, uh, let's go do that actually right now. So we, with the drive selected, make sure, <laughs> I, I don't want to have people see this video and lose data. It's, it would kill me to, under, to hear that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reemphasize over and over where it is you could possibly lose data. You must make sure as you're going to do this, that you have your new drive selected. <laughs> if you select this drive, for example, Macintosh HD, you're going to have you're going to lose your operating system. You're going to lose your setup of your programs. It's, it's going to be really problematic. If you format some of the other drives that are in the system are already attached and you're going to lose whatever's on them. So make sure, double check, triple check <laughs> that you have the correct drive selected as you're doing this. Don't do this unless you are sure. Next, you're going to hit this erase button that's up here. So I'm going to go and click on that and you get some options now. And these can be, these are super technical kinds of options. And a lot of people do not understand what these are. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to skip the name thing. We're going to get back to that in a second. But the format is what I want to change first. And XFAT actually has a limitation with the name. Um, in fact, I'll show you that really quickly. If I try to type any other characters, I'm, I'm on the end and I'm trying to add, this has reached the limit of what I can use in a name. And I find, I use a special convention in the names. I'll get back to that. But so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change from XFAT. I'm going to click on this and I, I have a bunch of options here. You can see I have NTFS as an option. I have Mac OS extended with both journaled and case sensitive options. I have APFS options at the top, a whole bunch of them. Um, you're going to hear different advice on this. So my advice is to choose this option, Mac OS extended. Um, the journaling is, is super important here. And in general, so far, the advice I've pr prominently seen in support forums and in the research I've done suggests that even though APFS is has massive improvements since it was first introduced several years ago, as the, I record this video in 2023, it, it came out with lots of challenges and they've definitely fixed uh, the majority of them. It is a very safe format to use these days on a Mac, but I still see enough problems with it on external drives that I discourage use of APFS today here in 2023. And it, it can be kind of a, a difficult piece of advice because APFS in particular has been highly optimized for managing and using SSD drives. This is an SSD drive that I am adding to my system as an external drive. 
but it's also primarily designed for the drives that come internal in your Mac. That is the emphasis that they've placed on it. And they haven't fully addressed, there's been problems uh, with external drives formatted in that fashion. Problems to the point of like losing everything on the drive because something didn't go quite right with an external drive. Uh, things unique to an external drive that aren't there for an internal drive that your Mac has. So for an external drive, this is the format I recommend is Mac OS external journal. Okay, so I'm going to choose that format. And now back to the name. I mentioned that I want to do everything I can to protect my images, make sure that as I save things to the drive, it has the best possible chance of saving correctly and not getting lost. Part of the challenge we face with drives is their life expectancy. They no drive lasts forever, whether it's the old spinning mechanical drives that we think of as like old and slow, but we can get in really high capacities, like 16 terabyte capacities or the newer SSD drives that don't have the mechanical parts and, uh, and are much, much faster, either kind, they both are going to fail. They do not last forever. None of them do, which is why backup is so, so important. Please do not mistake what I'm talking through here as you're not needing backup. If you choose this format of a drive that you don't need backup, you absolutely need backup. To, um, there's a reason that drive manufacturers offer at most... Uh, in most cases anyway, uh, the uh, three-year warranty. And in some cases, it's even less. It's because those drives, at the, the longer they're in service and they're being used, and especially for photographers who tend to put quite a bit of demand on those drives compared to people who maybe are like browsing the web and doing word processing or, or other non-intensive <laughs> things like that. Uh, we, we tend to, as photographers, really put a lot of load on these drives. Not like video, but it's you know, we, we put a lot of load. And so the, the likelihood that you're going to get more than three years out of a drive, it starts to go down dramatically at that three year mark. Doesn't mean you can't get five, seven, maybe even 10 years out of a drive, but you're starting to press your luck. The longer it goes beyond the three years, the more likely it is you're going to have a drive failure. Yes, you can restore from backup should it happen, but I personally don't want to leave it up to that. I don't want to put my photos or my images or, or any of my the things I put on this drive at risk. And so at, the, at three years of service, I want to actively, proactively replace it, even if it's not showing any signs of having problems. So I, in order to know how it is that it's been in service for three years, I don't know of a better way to do this than to just put it in the label, the name of the drive. So I'm going to back up SSD. I, I don't believe there's any extreme drives that don't have, that are not SSDs. They all are. Uh, so that piece of information is, is kind of useless. And then I'm going to put in the year, month, and day. So 2023 APR, and today's the 24th. Um, so that I can know every time I look at that label or every time I see that drive in my drive manager uh, in Finder or in Windows in Windows Explorer, it shows me how quickly the time bomb is ticking on this drive and that I need to replace it in 2026, April 24th, 2026. I need to replace this drive with a newer drive and, and so that I, I you know, keep my images as safe as possible. So. My recommendation on how to handle this, you're going to have to decide on, by your, on your own how much risk you want to take on with your, your images and, and the risk of losing them. Okay, with that, now I'm going to hit the erase button and I'm going to put in the disclaimer here again. You need to make sure you have the correct drive chosen and that you are willing or it's fine to lose every bit of information on that drive. It's not impossible to recover from a format like this but it's difficult and you just don't want to be there. You do not want to have to even try to work on that. So make sure there's nothing there. This is a brand new drive. There's nothing on it. So I am totally fine myself to be able to do this. If you uh, need to change this on a drive that has data on it and you don't want to lose that data, you need to copy the data off of the drive first, then format, and then you can put the data back on. So that, that's totally what it is. Uh, by the way, just because I'm showing you this, and maybe you didn't do this in the other drives you've got, maybe you've got drives you're using that have XFAT format. Um, it doesn't mean you need to necessarily go back and change those all, but I mean, you could, and, and if you want to be the safest possible, then you should. But you, again, you need to copy the data off, 
then format the drive and then put the bit data back on. And that often is not possible <laughs> for a lot of photographers to be able to do that. So, um, so just be totally warned. Do not erase the drive. Do not do this. Do not push this button until, unless you are absolutely certain you can, uh, you are fine with losing everything on the drive. Double check. You've got the right drive selected. Okay. So now I'm going to hit the erase button. And you can see kind of how fast this goes. It doesn't take much time at all, and it's done. It's a, it's a high-level format, not a low-level format that we're, we're doing here. So now it's finished, and it remounted the drive, and here it is, Extreme 2023 APR24. So now I have my drive formatted the way I need. I'm going to click on it again. You can see Mac OS, ex uh, OS Extended Journal. That's the format I've got. Now I'm ready to be able to use my drive and put it into my, my workflow. And I have the best possible setup to keep my images as safe as possible. Doesn't guarantee it'll always happen correctly. Drives are gonna fail, file copies can fail. It, it is not foolproof. It's just the best possible chance that my images and everything I put on this drive is going to, uh, to stick around and, and be right. Uh, okay, so so that's the basics of this. That's uh, that's what I, I highly recommend photographers do if they are going to add an external drive, SSD or old mechanical kind of formats to their workflow for photography. If you found this video helpful, would love a thumbs up on the on the video in YouTube. And uh, if you have any other technical questions, phototacopodcast.com is a, a really good resource where you can find a lot of information about the technical challenges photographers face and, and how you can do it. Details like I just went through here is a good example about how I approach a subject matter and try to make it something everybody can understand and utilize. That's again, phototacopodcast.com. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you later.